Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's review of the Caberg Duke Evo helmet. Okay, so if you're wondering why I'm saying Caberg in this video rather than Kberg, then there's a very simple reason for that. Turns out I've been saying it wrong for more than 20 years. So after someone who commented on an old review turned out to be correct, I can now say this is the Caberg Duke Evo helmet. It's based on the ridiculously popular Duke 2 with some upgrades to try and refine the experience a bit. First, a very quick history run through, I promise. The Kberg Duke was very mildly tweaked to become the Duke 2 and that helmet now is on its way out as we record this because it's approved to the outgoing safety standard ECE 2205. That helmet is being replaced by the Duke X, which has been revised slightly to meet the requirements of the new safety standard. And then on top of that, there's this, the Duke Evo. It's structurally very similar to the Duke X. I'd say the only difference to the main helmet portion is a more pronounced scoop for the top vent. The chin bar is completely different to the Duke X with a switchable air vent that you don't get on the X and there's a different opening button for that chin bar as well. There's also a different visor with a better fixing mechanism and a stronger lock position and the pin lock on the inside is a higher grade as well. The lining as well, that's improved over the Duke X and there's a more effective platform as well for intercoms to fit to this helmet. Right, let's run through the Duke Evo in a little bit more detail in its own right. The shell is made from ABS plastic and the weight on our scales is 1669 grams for this size medium helmet. That's pretty much on a par with all flip front helmets and I certainly wouldn't regard it as heavy. There are vents at the chin and up top, but in my experience of this helmet, the benefit of these is marginal at best. I have to admit, I couldn't feel any cooling air coming into the helmet at all. And if there is any benefit, it's over the long term rather than getting that immediate rush of cold air flowing in. Kaberg say the Duke Evo has internal air circulation, but I would say that's limited as well. There are channels in the EPS impact liner, but only at the back of the helmet. The top section where you find the channels on most helmets that say they've got air circulation is smooth on this helmet rather than grooved. The chin bar button, that's completely different to the Duke X and it's at the tip of the chin bar. You push it away and that releases the chin bar. Once that's up, you can lock it in place with the red switch behind the visor pivot. You don't need to have the chin bar lifted to use this switch. Now that's a good thing and a bad thing. If the switch is pushed in and then you lift the chin bar, then the chin bar won't come back down again afterwards. It's quite easy to accidentally knock the switch into that position. So you can end up with the chin bar locked up and you're not expecting it to be. So I would suggest practicing releasing that switch just in case you find yourself with the chin bar locked up and you don't know why it's like that. When the chin bar comes back down, it does give a reassuring click so you know it's securely back in place again. The visor change mechanism for this helmet is different to the basic Duke X and it is simpler to use. The visor also has four intermediate stages between open and closed, with the fifth step tending to automatically click it fully shut. There's no release button for that, just a firm push up is enough to get it moving again. I found it hard to get the visor into a cracked position for riding at low speed. The gap between the visor lip and seal is about 25 mil, which is quite a lot. I prefer to have a gap of around 10 millimeters to get enough air in without it being too drafty. To protect against mist, there's a Pinlock 70 insert, which is better than the Pinlock 30 in the Duke X. It's a higher grade material and it's also a max vision insert, which means it can sit a little bit higher and it means it's less likely to impede your vision. It didn't impede my vision at all when I wore this helmet. If you need to adjust the tension of the pin lock, external screw adjusters make that easier as well. I got some misty patches on the visor just in front of my nose when I first wore this helmet, and that was because the pin lock wasn't seated tightly enough on its bottom edge. Rotating these pins using the external screws got the insert to seat properly and the misting problem went away straight away. The sun visor that backs up the main visor, it's the same as the one on the Duke X. It operates on a switch on top of the helmet and in my opinion, it doesn't come down all that far in its lowest position. It also doesn't retract fully. It leaves a small amount showing, even though the switch is all the way back. It's this bit here. Previous Dukes did that too, and some customer reviews of that helmet were critical of that. The sun visor isn't coated to be fog resistant either, so you'll need to lift the main visor to clear that if it does mist up. Okay, let's go to the inside. Overall, the interior is higher quality than you get with the Duke X. The fabric covering the foam is better able to wick away moisture. The cheek pads fit more securely into the helmet and they also leave more room for intercom speakers. Behind the cheek pads, there are extra plastic parts that are meant to give a more stable place to mount the speakers for the intercom as well. It's better accommodation than on the Duke X, 
for intercoms, but the speakers do still sit a little bit low if you attach them fully to the plastic. The ideal location to get speakers next to your ears is to have half of the speaker stuck to the plastic and half stuck to the EPS, which is a shame as the speakers won't sit straight if you install them like that. For intercom fitment in general though, the Duke Evo does give you good freedom to fit whatever comm setup you want. There is a dedicated Caberg model, the ProSpeak Evo is designed to accommodate easily into this helmet, but I would say any off-the-shelf intercom will comfortably fit into this helmet. The chin curtain on the Duke Evo is more pleasant than on the Duke X, and it's also more securely mounted. It's so secure that at first it feels as though it isn't removable at all, but I promise it will come out if you do want to let a little bit more air into the helmet. And finally, the chin strap is probably exactly what you'd expect to find in a flip front helmet like this. It's a micrometric slider buckle. Okay, let's move on to sizing, pricing, and approvals. The Caberg Duke Evo comes in sizes from extra small up to extra large. Caberg don't say how many shell sizes there are, but my measurements suggest there is only one shell size to cover all the helmet sizes. If I'm corrected on that, then I'll add something in the description for this video to say so. This helmet is approved to the latest standard for use on the road, which is ECE 2206. And one of the biggest selling points for the earlier Duke and Duke II helmets was a five-star rating under the UK government's Sharp Impact Testing Programme. That rating gave people reassurance that a relatively cheap helmet still had good safety performance. There's no Sharp rating for the Duke Evo yet, but there's nothing to suggest the protection levels will have changed as the helmet part is virtually identical. But what I will say is that, in my opinion, a good Sharp rating is less important when you're looking at helmets that meet the new 2206 safety standard. The tests that are part of 2206 incorporate most of the elements of a sharp test anyway. So I would say the Duke Evo's rivals that pass 2206 shouldn't be far off in the safety stakes. If we get a sharp rating for this helmet, then we will add that to the description below for this video. The Duke Evo isn't ACU Gold approved for track riding, but I don't think that'll come as a surprise as most companies don't have their flips approved for track use. Right, pricing. In plain colours like this, the Cabo Duke Evo is £219.99 as we record this, and in graphics it's £259.99p. That's a price hike of £20 to £30 over a Duke X, which is £199.99 in plain colours and £229.99 in graphics as we record this. Is this helmet worth that extra money? In my opinion the answer is yes and no. If you're fixed on having a Caberg Duke, then the Evo's extra bits, in my opinion, are worth pushing the boat out a little bit for, especially that improved pin lock insert. But on its own merits, the price brings this helmet into more competitive territory. In essence, really, the Caberg Duke Evo is still a relatively cheap helmet with some nicer bits added. The Evo's evolutions don't quite, in my opinion, put this on a par with some other flip front helmets that are available for a similar price. Nolan's N93 has a similar price tag and I was impressed with that helmet when I reviewed it. HJC's i91 and Scorpion's XO 930 are both coming in 2024 and those look as though they'll offer stiff competition for a similar price. All of those helmets will be approved to the 2206 safety standard and I'd have as much confidence in that as the high sharp rating that drew so many riders to the Duke helmets. I found the Cabo Duke Evo though to be a decent enough helmet that offers a more pleasant experience than the basic Duke X. But if I had 220 to 260 pounds to spend on a flip front helmet, then I would be looking at the competition very closely before deciding to invest that money in a Duke Evo. I hope that tells you everything you wanted to know about the Cabo Duke Evo. But if there is anything you'd like to ask or to add, then please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.